Can't go in the can't go in the boat room. It can go in it, it can go over it, it can go under can't it. In there. Where will it go? Where can we put the track? Can't go can it go in the cloak room? Go in the room? Behind the boards? Yes. Yes. We'll have to check with Steph. <laughs> no, fuck it. We'll Did just you see those boards? So tell us about Glyn and Amy then. You said the whole group work really hard, but Yeah, they're doing their acts and everything else. They're good. Well, I don't know whether they're professionals or semi. Are you semi professionals or professionals? Oh, absolute cheeky bitch. We are professionals and I will have nothing else said, okay? Um, she may have taught me everything we knew, I, I, but. I'll take semi professional. Yeah, we've moved on. She turned up today in her, in her what we call the clothes you came in? Day wear. In her day wear. <laughs> and I was like, help yourself to the sink pink drag. So she found, we've got, oh, sorry, got things. We've got a little lacy one piece and a little white cross skirt. And a Virgin Mary outfit from our sentimental from last year, and it's got some. Exo love written in blood on the back. <laughs> We're about to open. I've got to go. Sorry. Here I'll up in this place Love the way you drop it Yeah, deliver that bass Hit it so that heavy Yeah, I'll up in my face Come on, baby, go hard It's such a mad place The Bethnal Green Working Men's Club Because it still is a working men's club <laughs> It's just often these really weird clashes On the stairs With like Bijock strapped transvestites And sort of like Family of eight I think it's kind of like um, a living John Waters movie. And people really respond to that and love the fun of it. But I don't think you can just walk into it either. You know, you've got to have something special. Being a dedicated, semi-retarded tranny is probably like the ideal mix to be like for Sink the Pink. People still think one of our performances could be you take a poo in the stage and, and throw some glitter on it and that's an art piece. I want to show people that Sing the Pink's not all about that, that we can actually put a full-on production show together and it look tight. Glenn and Amy, they're always kind and they always look after the girls. I seen Glenn a few weeks ago and like I, as I have been for the past few weeks struggling because I've had no work, just him buying me two bottles of Prosecco was the nicest thing in the whole entire world right then. I've been partying in London for maybe eight or nine years now on the kind of East London alternative gay scene and I think the pink seems to have brought a new lease of life and a new bunch of people who are ready to experiment and go wild and really kind of push the boundaries. What's a really interesting thing right now is that it's this passing over from counterculture to a more mainstream thing. Yeah, no, it's not as underground or as, as niche as Paris as Burning was and things like that, but also at the same time, my friends aren't being murdered, you know. We're still never going to be those American drag queens that would, like, really go for the femininity, really go for this sort of, like, poise and, and elegance and looking this term they use, which I don't really like very much, is fishy. It's still not going to be that so much in, in Sink the Pink. If there's one or two characters like that, you say, yes, you look like an amazing woman, and that's, that's fab, we support you on that. But I look like a sort of homeless parrot. <laughs> that's my version of drag, and we support that as well. My name's Julian Smith, um, that's the name I go by in the week, but at the weekends mostly I'm Jackie Potato. I used to be a fashion designer, like, um, and like have my own label, 
But um, I sort of started to get a bit annoyed that I'm making these dresses that are supposed to be really expensive for really posh women who've got loads of money. And I just thought, I don't know those women and I don't care about them as well. And I just want to start wearing my creations or my ideas about women's fashion. Now my main skill is pattern cutting. I used to do it for Roland Murray and now for Erdem. Doing drag has a creative aspect, but I can be sort of quite destructive and quite sort of nihilistic at times as well. So it can have a bit of a knock-on effect in terms of boys, like, because they just think, oh, I don't want to go with Jackie, she's mental. <laughs> it's a really interesting one with my parents because of Facebook. People only put up the shocking pictures of Jackie. You know, there is no nice, nor normal, pictures of me just like, here I am, woke up in the morning, or here I am eating a dinner. You know, it's none of that. It's me with my legs in the air wearing a jock strap on the street at 7 a.m. outside a club. My dad, very, very sweetly, is supportive in, in this. I know that he's supportive, but at the same time, he can't handle it, really. <laughs> you know, he doesn't really want to see the images of me in dresses and things like that, and he doesn't really want to know about drinking and the partying. English people as well can be a bit, a bit like, just sweep it under the carpet, let's not bother that, you know? Listen, one minute, everybody. Sink the Pink have started to sort of realise that they're going to have to do things outside of the Bethnal Green Working Men's Club because it's getting very big and it's getting very popular. It's just great to have a, an, an, another excuse for a big party, really. But this one, big, much bigger. It's mostly us doing routines, and I think they've got some <laughs> pop stars booked for it as well. It's a huge, huge venue with so many people going. And it's not just gay people going. There are loads of straight people, I'm sure, going. It's kind of a move towards that polysexual crowd that it used to be called. Uh, before, but thankfully no one uses that term anymore. <laughs> Have we got a time check, by any chance? Uh, yeah, it is five to nine. Five to nine, so I'm five minutes away, yeah? Yeah, yeah there was a couple of minor traumas. It's all right now. I actually cried at one point. Did just for added trauma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a drama queen. We both cried all I just, day. Because I've been planning it for so long, I just wanted it to feel perfect. And that that point wasn't perfect. Amy, I'm going to go up and see the girls now. I want to go in. I felt like I needed a bit of excitement from them. Yeah, we're going to do a bit of a tranny brief at half nine before we go on at Can ten. Can we be in that? Yeah, that. you have yeah, to be in. Yeah. yeah, everything's fine. Because we're just having a laugh. It's just sink the pink. Yeah. <laughs> and then you guys are going to work back to the you guys go back to the same, same, same. Yeah. What happened with the last one? Are we going? You look very demure. Demure. Probably. It's the first time she's been called down. Joking. Well, I've known Nick as well. Jacob just got off first. At uni. Not uni, Cambridge. <laughs> Some people call it upcycling. I call it budget rejuvenation. <laughs> Where you find a piece on the high street or in a charity shop and you think that's got potential and then you jazz it up a bit more. So this is just a shit top. I won't tell you where from. But <laughs> I've added a little juicy jazzy on the bottom. You can see. <laughs> These are my looks. Mm. So sort of a spectrum of nudes, black, and one slice of colour. Okay. Please I think people think sort of why am I getting a solo number or why are they not? The reason why I'm getting the solo number is because I've worked my ass off to get that solo number. From day one of us starting rehearsals, I've been so adamant. If anybody has had too much to drink and there's one stumble of a move, 
you're out, you're cut. That sounds cutthroat, but we've all worked so hard, and I'm not going to let anybody ruin that for us. Right. Is everyone here? Yeah. Oh, let's see. I'm only half done. I'm only half done. Good morning. Are we here? Are we here? Please beware that um, you keep an eye, not on times, but what's, what's on stage, so whether you're following or when you're going to follow, because obviously the timings are now being pushed back, so we're not working to time, we're working to acts. In between the acts, obviously if a few of you can just go on stage and just sort of do what you would normally do at Sick the Pink. But only mince if you know that you've got enough time before your next act. That's really important. Turning to gay night for 3,000 people is like, okay, like that's a fucking dream. And then the fact is in Tower Hamlets, like you can go places that aren't posh, you can go places that aren't clean, and it's good and it's fun and it's okay and you'll be fine and you'll have a great time. And you don't need to be around things like, um, Soho. I am uh, oozing gloop by name and nature. And I am the Globe's premier autistic green drag queen. <laughs> also Michael as well. I could never just take all of these and just put it in a box and put it under the bed and be like, I'm not gonna open that for a bit because it's like carry most of that inside me as well and things, and just the way I am. So there's no his and hers. Um, I guess more in its and ours. When I was in high school, I was the most bullied person I knew like ever. I was put into the, um, because they didn't know how to deal with me. I was in the top set. Uh, for everything, but then they moved me to the lower set where I had support workers because they couldn't just deal with me because it's just this genius spactard who knew all the answers to everything and then couldn't actually deal with all the other kids. What I find so brilliant and reassuring about drag is the fact that when you're actually all done up like this and stuff like that, it takes away the vast majority of communication. You don't actually have to talk that much with people and stuff like that. When your look says it for you, you can be very, very eccentric and very strange and it's okay. I used to attach so much importance to university and the idea of ach achieving education and the idea of achieving in this, in this recognised, officiated kind of way. That dream has died. Uh, but it's been replaced with so many, you know, it's basically meant that I get to live in a fantasy. Mm. Do you get attention from the chasers? Like, I got a, uh, a blowjob once and dragged from this straight boy in uh, the toilets and 
we were kind of like, we're into the toilet to like make out, get a little bit cozy. I went to pull my wig off and he was like, no, leave the wig on. And it was this grandma grey smithies thing that I'd found somewhere. And when some guy comes up to you and goes, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen, they do not want a woman. They do not want a woman. <laughs> It needs something black if you want to be shaved. Then. No, that's. No, you're that's right. Share. No, it's not shaved. Is that shaved? No. Is that shaved? No, not, not it's this shaved. Okay, behind it. Is that shaved? Kind of. Shares. Oh my god. Yeah, that's going. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, got the bag, Lucy. What the fuck is that? What? This is a heavy print. It's actually print. I'll let you off. You let me off. I think I'm head of costume here. Thank you very much. I had to go and get two, two different rail replacement buses. And I went to Hackney, I had a burrito, and then I got a taxi here, and the taxi was like, oh. But yes, and I've got, I've got a, um, a bag here with my stuff in it, but my makeup kit is actually like bigger than my costume, including the shoes. Uh, so. There's the, I saw the, um, the other dressing room earlier on, right, that they got like the fancy people. Air conditioning, oh, their own fridge full of like organic whole range snacks. We were up here, like some sort of like gender fuck sweatshop. Okay, like it does like, like literally like a battery, a battery of trainers. Fortunately, to make this up a little bit more efficient, I found this in the road earlier on today. Some clip on the tie. Uh, someone obviously got fired. So in 10 minutes, we need to be ready for the opening night. <laughs> Should I be red or blonde? Oh. Yes! Yes! She lives! If you're going to be out for hours and hours and hours, sometimes you have to shave up so it really gets down to the root. And sometimes I am out for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> John Bonnet blonde can be prissy and very uptight sometimes. And I, and I definitely, I definitely have a thing where I'll, I'll, I know a lot of people don't don't like me. I always knew I was gay, and growing up in the middle of nowhere, where obviously it's not really a big thing to be gay at all, was tough. It was tough, and and like I I remember being young and being depressed like a lot. Growing up watching like pop stars and Britney and Christina and NSYNC and all those big like American like boy bands and girl bands and and there would always be like a big performance coming up uh, and the, the one that I can remember without a doubt is Britney's Slave For You 
in my head, I was, I was Britney Spears. <laughs> when I was 16, turning 17, I was in college and I skipped school one day because I went to the hairdresser to get my hair done. My mum phoned me at the, at the end of the appointment and we're like, where are you? And I was like, I'm at the, at the salon. And she's like, why, why, why are you at the salon? Why are you not at school? And I could tell something in her voice that was sort of different than normal. And I was like, I was just getting my hair done. She was like, right, I'm coming to get you now. So when I got into the car, she was so, like, I could tell it in her face that she was so angry. And I, I turned to her and said, I was like, why are you so angry? And she was like, why, why I can't believe you would take a day off just to get your hair done. What are you going to do with your life? Da, da, da. And I was like, where is this all coming from? Like, like, chill out. And then all of a sudden she just turned to me and was like, are you gay? And I, at that moment, I was just like, do you know, I'm so bored of hiding and so bored of just not saying anything. I was like, do you want to know the truth? And she was like, yeah, I do want to know the truth. And I was like, yeah, I am. And she completely broke down completely broke down and we were driving like down the motorway and the car was getting faster and faster and faster and I swear that I thought that she was going to crash the car on purpose when we got home she like literally jumped out of the car I didn't even think she put the handbrake on I think I had to put the handbrake on and she ran up the stairs and slammed the door behind me I remember packing up my stuff and just leave, like leaving most things in my bedroom and walking up the hall and I could hear my mum crying, and she just, I, I, she was, it was so loud. I just walked out the front door and walked up the hill and waited for my cousin at the top of the road. And I just remember thinking that, like, she just didn't care. <coughs> Sorry. The whole fact of being kicked out and not wanted, and then all of a sudden you you know you have people cheering for you. We're doing drag. That is how I sort of see it. It is your your like little pop star moment, and that definitely is exciting. It's definitely it's definitely what I longed for.
Yeah, we some of the judges are going to go and get the drinks, basically. I know, we basically, we need to find Dan um, to yeah, get he's, them. He's really fucking busy, so we might just have to get some money. Matthias, you're yes. the one. Base, you're the one. Can you go to the bar and find Dan? We need to get... What time is it? Can we run to a shop, buy a load of booze and bring it back in? We basically, we need to... It's past midnight. Alright, so we need... We need it's East London, there'll be shops open. ten bottles of vodka. And it's sand just for that uh, judges room. Run to a corner shop with my card. Right. Oh, uh, my card keeps need, bouncing. I just need to my change uh, the saddle. Oh, my card stopped working because I spent so much on the Banger Boys. It's, it's going to be all the thing. I spent so much fucking money on their flights. I just oh, took from I all my own savings. Oh, no. And now these motherfuckers want more drinks. I don't even know if mine will. Jesus Christ, it's done. There's man. no money in the sink the pink account. Right, There's no need, money in my account. Don't go to the shop, we need to go to Dan. Should so I go get Dan? Go to Dan and say, for really what? urgently, the judges are going to leave. We need... You're being fucking divas, I don't care. No, I know, but it's the way it is. So let's not deliberate, let's just do. Let's just do. That is not the sink the pink way. I know, but it's... It, to me, it's to us and them. It's no, like, but they're doing I'm it for free. They're doing it for free, know. so, you know. But I'm not down with it. They're doing it for a night out in booze and they want to get drunk, so we've got to get them drunk. But that's all there is to yeah. it. Yeah. Oh my god. Do what I say now, happiness is just around the corner. Hey now, hey now, do what I say now, we'll be there for you. The Venga bus is coming and everybody's down here. Do you think you've got enough makeup on that, Greg? More no. is more. More <laughs> is more. What's I saying? More is more. Uh, this is to my neighbor, Morris. <laughs> <laughs> That's so it. Cool. Julia, come on, Julia. 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 Julia, come on, break your close up. Julia, come on, break your close up. Oh, she's the queen of the East London uh, Sea. High in the air. High in the air in the, in the, in the you know, the East London Sea. Oh, you know, shiny. Getting ready to go on the catwalk, you know. Look at the competition. Look at the competition oh, girls. Can you introduce yourself to the camera? Right? I'm Lobster Bisque. <laughs> I'm Envy. QPV. I don't have a drag name, so she's made up a drag. <coughs> What's my drag name? I thought we were really good one today. Silate. Silate. She is such a Silate. Come on. It's very therapeutic. It's almost like, you know, putting on wall paint to a certain extent. It's kind of like, when I do the clothes without the makeup, I'm a lot more aware of other people and how they perceive me. Whereas, I think, when I've got the makeup on, it's almost like the, the, the full effect, you know, on my, the, the, my armour. My looks are quite garish and quite grotesque and a bit out there, you know? Yeah, I, kind of, I think it kind of intimidates people. I don't know, I can think it's like kind of rebellion against the normal, like I don't want to be a normal, like pretty person, you know? I, I, I enjoy being ugly. I kind of didn't belong at home and I always kind of intrinsically knew that I wanted to get out of Newcastle and go somewhere I could be a bit more free and then I kind of had an epiphany during my, um, my college course there, I was like, I need to move to London. It's just the place for me, you know? Like, I can, I can be free there, I can do what I want to do. And then everything kind of sank in that I was leaving Newcastle and moving to the other side of the country with nobody. And I just cried the whole way there with my parents, which was ridiculous. It's me just going, I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> a few days later, I was like, right, it's the first day of university. Going to go, get all dressed up, just do it. Grab it by the balls, go for it. So we were on this boat trip on the Thames for kind of like warmer poi to get to meet everybody. So I decided I was going to do like a full face and makeup and my blue mohair cardigan, some shorts and fishnets and it was like, it must have been like 30 degrees as well, it was like the hottest day I've ever experienced in the UK. So I was here on the boat on the Thames, sweating me tits off makeup everywhere. Like there was so much doubt like, am I doing this? I'm like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And I was like, no, you moved here. The reason why you moved here was to do this. So just do it, just man up and just do it, you know. And I ended up having one of the best days of my whole entire life because it was kind of like I just felt so happy and so comfortable and so free that I was like, fuck all these people staring. I'm so happy with it, you know? I don't think it's going to paint. It's just the piss up. Even though we play kind of the role of the kind of fool or the jest that within the club scene, we're doing things, we're changing things. Ultimately, people are going to go there, be inspired by it, take notes from it and use it on themselves and it's going to be 
part of mainstream culture. Are we ready to get on with tonight's show? It is time to award one child from every who has come dressed in their finest with the seek, the peak, wellness category. Are we ready? Bye. your face is to start off with, you know. So Listen, Fizz, I don't think I was asking Make questions. Makeup in two minutes. Up, uh, Girls, <laughs> I'm trying to have an instant Sorry. camera moment. Uh, moment. They're it's, not even taking I was supposed to up, but <laughs> <they're not laughs> It takes a long time to get to the ball. It takes several months. Uh, a lot of hard work. Uh, None of Lucy Fizz's <laughs> reaction. <laughs> Stop licking my fingers. Uh, <laughs> it takes. It does take a lot of... Oh my, maybe I'm talking. Lucy Fizz is wild, but Lucy Fisk isn't quite as wild. Um, depending on how well I know you or how comfortable I kind of feel around you, you'll get a different kind of percentage of one or the other. I came from, yeah, Burnley up north, a small old industrial mining town kind of on the down and out. Um, I was a really geeky, bookish um, young boy and, you know, I didn't have any friends at school. I was bullied. Even when I went to university in London, I still didn't kind of get on with anyone and didn't really have any friends. I think people found it really hard to place me because I was kind of half transitioning there. I did my first year as Luke and then at the end of the year I changed my name and then went back the next um, term in September as Lucy. When I went to Glastonbury and then to Bestival with Sink the Pink for the first times, it was a real kind of stepping stone and marker in me kind of accepting myself in a way and realising that people actually didn't give a shit about who I used to be and they loved me for who I am. And over the years, the friends that I've made through Sink the Pink have kind of become like my London family in a way. To find a place where my struggles are celebrated, it just makes it everything so much more worthwhile and I know that I've done the right thing and I'm so happy. The other week it was my anniversary. it was eight years since I had my surgery and I went out and had a party with all my friends to celebrate it. I look back through Facebook and maybe I'll go and find someone who 
I didn't particularly like at school and look at what they're doing and look at what I'm doing and I'm like, yeah, I win. <laughs> I kind of feel like I've lost the purpose or a big part of me is gone now. I love it here. I'm not leaving. I can't be myself in Newcastle. Even in terms of sexuality and stuff, like I kind of didn't grasp that properly until I moved to London and kind of realised who I was. With my mum it was a for sure thing of lack of understanding. I know that looking back now, I have to understand that's the way she grew up. But she grew up in rural Ireland and everything was perfect in the way and they needed that time to really get their head around it and know that I'm not some sort of demon. I think now like it's definitely turned 360 like if I get a job or I if I'm doing a photo shoot I can call them and, and tell them like the time that we we done a party with Kylie like she was like so excited about that she's like oh my god I can't believe you're getting to meet Kylie Minogue. Fuck it! We're fucking transvestites and have some of this you cunts! Potential to make money in these alternative queer things like there never has been before. If you have the time and the dedication and the desire to actually see it through. Yeah, and it does cross my mind occasionally, like how long will it go on for? You know, but it's just however long I'm still inter interested in going out. My weekends are not usually consumed with going to Reading to look at some interior old interior design brochures or something <laughs> like it's just not, I'm not doing that I'm not sort of I'm not got a boyfriend that we're trying to make a nice house and uh, I'm not having a baby and I'm not you know I'm not got a do you see what I'm saying I'm still that young you going out you type person I'd like to settle down and you know own my own place but I'd don't really want much to change. I'm like I'm having the time of my life at the moment, and in a way, my 20s have been like my teenage years for me because I never got to do all this when I was growing up. I like stayed at home. I didn't go out partying, and it was only when I found my friends in London that this life that was hiding inside me got a chance to kind of explode. If you're going to do something shit, you have to really celebrate and embrace how shit it is. It's like if you've got this really hardcore like face that's really beaten and really poised and really beautiful and really perfect, it stops you from putting yourself out there in the way that you need to to have a certain vulnerability to really be something special. So that's why no matter how much Sink the Pink rehearses, they're always gonna have that, but it's because they're also dodgy anyway. There's always gonna be someone who trips. Things are getting really exciting with Think the Pink and we're doing a lot of things. After after Summer Ball, we're going to sit down and, and probably plan out a year-long plan. I think there's still yet more to come. Well, I know there is.
X-rated. The ball is over. It was so successful. Like it was, it was beyond our wildest dreams. Like Sing the Pink used to be this club where, and I've been there. Like I know there's all. I'm really sorry, but that's my fault. <laughs> grab it, grab it, grab it. You know, on a scale of one to ten, it's been the fun has been at level eleven, and now it's at level minus forty-six. <laughs> I love you outside.